Hey guys, I'm Grubby and I'm here to give you my thoughts on Diablo 4. I've been covering Blizzard games for over 20 years, playing Diablo 1, 2 and a little bit of 3 as well, Warcraft 2 and 3, Starcraft 1 and 2, Hearthstone, you name it. So, Early Access Diablo 4 release day was finally upon us yesterday, on Friday, March 17th, and we rushed through the gates of hell to await our place in the queue simulator purgatory. Luckily, I was early and I needed only to wait mere minutes before being granted access. I created my character and set out into the world of Diablo 4. After the initial opening cutscene that pleasingly used the hero that I designed in the character creation screen, in which my horse was brutally killed, we got stuck out in a snowstorm and terribly cold. We mysteriously found something akin to a vision, had something akin to a vision, in which a bloody wolf appeared out of the great white beyond. We wake up in a small tavern and are graciously offered hot stew and a pint by the locals. The pint was spiked with something unholy and we pass out and are carted off to somewhere for Diablo knows what. This cutscene was a real killer <laughs> because at this point my streaming software got overloaded and it crashed entirely ending my stream in the process though Diablo 4 kept running with notable FPS lag. This is something that hadn't happened to me before. A browsing across the internet shows select cases having similar issues as me, and I was stuck exploring and experiencing the rest of Diablo 4's opening act off stream. This gave me a chance to dig out my experience of the game and regale it to you fine folks. My i9 9900K CPU and my RTX 3080 graphics card, and my 32GB NVMe RAM suffered stutters and FPS lags even with my streaming software OBS shut down. I was running the game at the highest GFX fidelity, and during gameplay, dungeon switching and cutscenes, I would experience some stutters. So at this point, I'm at the very least considering a PC upgrade, or I could wait for Blizzard's optimization improvements. There has been some talk of D4 memory leaks by some early access players. Let's talk about the difficulty. I chose to roll as a sorceress, playing at the highest difficulty and the lowest tutorial help possible. And in the first four hours of play, I have not found a gameplay scenario where I felt threatened yet. A gentle onboarding is definitely a wise move for Blizzard as you don't want to scare off players early on. I'm sure there will be plenty of challenges later down the road that will scare the living daylights out of hardcore characters which die permanently on the hero's death. And that would require improved crafting and finding of items in order to advance. So far though, a bit too easy for my liking, but I don't think that's a wrong decision by Blizzard per se. The skill tree of the game is more interesting than in Diablo 2, which is the other Diablo game I've played the most. For the first 15 levels, you can freely respec into any other skill, allowing you to experiment and try out different elemental abilities without the permanence of skill choices in Diablo 2 characters. Creating a wholly new character and grinding out the levels in order to try out what 5 levels of Chain Lightning might feel and look like will no longer be necessary. In higher levels, after level 15, you'll pay a gold price for respecting your talents and skills, which gives gold a pleasing value and adds some weight to your skill tree decision making. I think this system is a good middle way of the extreme versions of no respecting at all, like in D2, or limitless respecking, like in some other games. The skills themselves look pleasing enough, and because they're early skills, they probably shouldn't look like they are a world-breakingly strong spell, lest it leaves no space for later on Magnificence with higher level skill animations. I don't feel like I have a lot of options in skill choices early on, especially in comparison to Path of Exile, where their skill system immediately allows for way more than 20 plus different options in how you want to slay your infernal enemies. In the first hours of gameplay, I find myself serenaded mostly by melancholy tunes that are reminiscent of what WoW ambience might sound like, but with a darker tone that is suiting to the Diablo 4 setting. Diablo 4 felt Diablo 2 like in the music tone, the quality and the graphical tone of the game. I have not yet heard any memorable standalone OST tracks though, if that makes sense, in the same sense that 
we had the absolute banger that Tristram was in Diablo 1 and 2. Perhaps such is to come later, or perhaps the game is suffused with more low impact ambience, decorative tracks, with crescendos of emotions during high stakes moments. A music that evolves with the situation and action, rather than iconic town based OST banger tracks like Tristram was. I would describe the world so far as immersive enough, and though I wouldn't say I'm totally 100% engaged with the story, as I am focused on the progression of my quest and my items more rather than totally being into the story and the side quests, I'd say at least I have a 70-80% immersion into the vibe of the game so far. The Lilith storyline is intriguing, and my favorite part so far is the church scene with the absolutely diabolical expressions and consequences. I really love that part. Though I didn't get to enjoy it together with Stream, I reveled in it off stream. I have almost nothing but good to say on the graphics. It blows Diablo 2 and D3 out of the water with the vistas and the beauties of the demonic beings and the surrounding terrain. This is one of my highest scores in aspects, in various aspects of Diablo 4. The water and its reflection, the terrains, the darkness, yet still lingering visibility of the gruesomeness all around are good. There's something visceral missing, I don't know if it's just me or if there's a small part of the soul and import of the surroundings missing. Again, this is a story based feeling and it's highly personal. Uh, still, overall, it's an 8.5 out of 10 for me for the graphics. The items follow the item level system which allows for easy comparisons in plus signs and green colors that show when a new item outperforms an old one. Items take up just one hex in your inventory, removing the archaic reordering Tetris system that Diablo 2 cutely had. Gold and orbs and herbs do not take up inventory space, which is a big breath of relief. Customization is rife as you're able to craft, disassemble components, transmog, and level up existing items and so forth. Now, the question, is it worth it? The game comes with a steep price tag of 70 euros or dollars minimum, with the possibility to spend 80 instead, 10 more, or 90, 20 more, for improved aesthetics, skins, what have you. I didn't dig too deep into that. And I believe you also have four day earlier access come its eventual true official release in June 23, four days earlier than others that do not pre-purchase uh, with that price. And then you have the near $100 physical collector's edition, which comes without the game included. So if you are looking for completeness, you're one of those completionists, you would be shelling out about $190 for the highest version of the game, including its collector's edition physically. Whether any of these prices for the game are worth it for you, is a deeply personal decision and estimation. Uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out, may drive you to pre-purchase now, which allows access to the early access now and next weekend, even though that's still technically a pre-purchase, something which we said, uh, which many of us said we wouldn't do anymore after the Warcraft Reforged debacle or other disappointments in the gaming industry by Blizzard or otherwise. Prudent gamers may choose to wait and see how the optimization problems that plague some will be fixed. However, Lilith's bloody bitties may tempt us in the other direction, that of indulgence. Overall, I would play Diablo 4 over D2, which for some was the golden standard for ARPGs, at least until Path of Exile and even beyond that for some. A D4 brings many MMORPG elements over, probably for the better. And I'm looking forward to trying out big player events, like spawning world bosses and whatnot. I had not played much Diablo 3, so I can't make big comparisons there. But I enjoyed my time in D4 so far, and I'm looking forward to trying out the Necromancer in particular next weekend. The launch, as expected, was riddled with various issues, but it still looks like D4 is shaping up to be a very lasting game if various issues get improved upon. It's been a while since Blizzard released a game that was not a remaster, with Overwatch in 2015 and Diablo Immortal more shortly ago uh, being the most recent ones. 
Among those three, I do believe D4 is my favorite. And it's the best Blizzard game release in the last nine years, therefore. Nine years ago, Hearthstone released. The big interest in the game so far shows its potential. And as always, now it's up to Blizzard, the developer, to continue to evolve their live service game to gain a following of Lilith Disciples. Uh, I give D4 a cautious 7 or 8 out of 10 as a whole so far for the ambience, the skill tree, the gameplay feeling, the story and the performance. Early access is 3 months before its launch in June. It means there's still some time for optimization, but not a lot. I hope you enjoyed my review of Diablo 4 so far. And if you did enjoy this, remember to like, comment and subscribe and let me know your thoughts of Diablo 4 and this video in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching and remember, sub to the grub.